about two weeks ago, I had a brand new grill I was using, a, a gas grill I was using outside. And I have spray away wipes now that I sell to gyms to clean their equipment. And I had a spray away wipe in my hand and I had burned. I had gotten first and second degree burns on my arm. And I had from grease and I had a spray away wipe in my hand, the first, my other hand. The first thing I did was wipe that arm. It was my first automatic response. And I never had pain, any at all. And it literally started to heal almost from that very moment. It's just, it's, it's healing. I, I have never experienced pain since. Welcome to the Invention Stories podcast where we share stories of inventors who turn their idea into a product. Please visit our website at www.inventionstories.com. And now, from the Invention Stories Podcast World Headquarters Studios in Morro Bay, California, is our host, Robert Baer. Welcome to the Invention Stories Podcast. I am your host, Robert Baer, and thank you for joining us today. You're listening to Episode 20 of the Invention Stories Podcast, Beth Chester, and the Spray Away Cleaner Part 1. The Invention Stories Podcast is brought to you by the Socket Saver. Do you have loose wall sockets in your house? The Socket Saver is a simple solution. Learn more at www.socketsaver.com. I don't know much about cleaning products, but I would like to buy fewer of them, and I want them to work and not make me sick. The Spray Away Cleaner might be what I'm looking for. Our guest today is Beth Chester from the great New England area, Massachusetts. Welcome, Beth, to the Invention Stories podcast. It's great to have you with us. Let's get started. What gave you the idea for Spray Away Cleaner? Actually, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. I needed to get through the holidays with a dirty bedroom carpet that was stained with a huge coffee stain. I had actually saved enough money to replace all the carpeting in my bedroom and the second floor of my home. While I was out picking out the carpeting and the underlayment, my cat became very ill. And when I came home, I found my cat unresponsive on the floor. So I have a a care veterinary uh, hospital right near me and they could do life-saving surgery, but it was going to cost $2,200, the exact amount it was gonna cost me to replace my carpets. So I had a choice to make either find a way to clean my carpets (laughs) or tear them up and throw them away because I was going to save my cat. So um, I went down into my kitchen and I have a pretty good uh, background in chemistry. I took chemistry all through college and loved it and excelled at it. I got straight A's in chemistry, but I never thought about being a chemist. I was a restaurant manager and professional athlete. So it was not on my scope of what I might do with my life. And so when I went down to my kitchen, I'm pouring some stuff in a bottle and a chemical reaction happened. And I knew at that moment, either it was going to take out the coffee stain because I had tried everything else. I had an Electrolux uh, shampooer. I had tried Woolite. I had tried um, Stanley Steamer. I had tried all these different products and nothing would touch the coffee stain in my carpet. So I knew at that moment it was either going to take out the stain or it was going to put a hole in my carpet. It was going to be one of the two. So I was so glad to find my oldest daughter sitting right next to the stain in my bedroom when I went upstairs to try it. And it literally started to vanish before our eyes. Otherwise, I would have thought, like, is this really happening? (laughs) I'm not really sure this is happening. And so um, the two of us were astounded. And we just started to use it on everything, all the carpeting, all the upholstery in the house, just to see what would happen. And sure enough, it worked amazingly. So I wanted to send it to two labs just to verify the fact that this definitely works. And the lead chemist that I contacted said, you know, patent the formula if you really think it works like it does. So I paid a patent attorney to file for the patent for the formula. And then I sent it to him and he became a mentor of mine after testing it. Now he tested it against all kinds of stuff, not just stain removers like I thought it was. He tested it against soap scum removers, germ killing cleaners, bathroom cleaners, toilet bowl cleaners, furniture polish. I mean, he tested it against everything, OxyClean in the laundry and on stains. So it tested profoundly better than everything else on the market. And it's non-toxic and pH balanced. You can spray it in your face. So he told me to continue. He has been my mentor ever since. And 
I continue to find amazing new things about this product ever since I invented it. And I just can't even believe it. I never intended it for it to be anything more than a cleaner and a stain remover. But about two weeks ago, I had a brand new grill I was using, a, a gas grill I was using outside. And I have spray away wipes now that I that I sell to gyms to clean their equipment. And I had a spray away wipe in my hand and I had burned. I had gotten first and second degree burns on my arm. And I had from grease and I had a spray away wipe in my hand, the first, my other hand. The first thing I did was wipe that arm. It was my first automatic response. And I never had pain, any at all. And it literally started to heal almost from that very moment. And it's just, it's, it's healing. I, I have never experienced pain since. So I need to have it. Yeah, I need to have it further tested. I mean, I really need to go to a lab and pay to have them tested for the FDA and the EPA so that I can get it into hospitals because it's a great butt wipe for adults that are stuck in bed and bedridden. It just cuts right through that stuff and it's pH balanced so it won't hurt their skin. So people that are constantly being cleaned in bed don't have to worry. It's just, it's really been an incredible incredible journey since I invented this product. You're listening to the Invention Stories podcast. My name is Robert Bear, and our guest today is Beth Chester, and she's telling us the story behind the Spray Away Cleaner. Now, Beth, growing up, did you invent? Were you were you an inventor growing up? No, I had always, you know, thought about it. Actually, when I was 12 years old, I invented the clicker. But my parents would not give me the money to file for a patent. And two years later, it came out. And now it's time for a commercial break. As I mentioned earlier in the Invention Stories podcast, we are now sponsored by Socket Saver. The Socket Saver is an easy, safe, and effective solution. No repairs necessary, no circuit breakers involved, no electrical knowledge or mechanical skills required. Socket Savers are inexpensive, efficient, and portable. For more information, please visit www.socketsaver.com. Now, Beth, everybody has a good idea or thinks they have a good product. Was your experience with the results of the spray away cleaner the reason that you decided to go forward with pursuing this as a product? Yes, yes. I mean, I couldn't help it. The lead chemist, he, he was a, you know, I mean, to have a lead chemist tell me that I needed to patent it and it really worked. And that's what he does is he tests all these other cleaners. It's what he does for a living. So, I mean, I really trusted him. And I couldn't believe the results I was getting. So I didn't immediately go out and sell it to the public because, again, this isn't something that I was used to doing. I was uncomfortable. So I brought it to the hospital, the Cape Cod Hospital, and they tested it as germ kill right in front of me in a machine. And it blew my mind. And that was another catalyst that just kind of continued. And then I picked up these two huge accounts. One was a, a retirement community center, community, a retirement community. And they had a bout with the norovirus. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, no, I've never heard of the norovirus. That's when you, uh, it's, it's a very bad virus. It's when you're vomiting and you have diarrhea at the same time. Uh, no, I haven't. It sounds horrible. Oh, it's horrendous. You feel like you just, you just want it. You don't feel like you want to die. You just want to die because it's so awful. And you have it for, it's usually 24 to 48 hours maximum, but it is a very vicious, vicious virus. And it's, it can be deadly for adults, uh, uh, elderly people. So they had a bout of the norovirus and that nothing was cleaning their carpets or anything. And I had left them a couple of bottles of spray away at their front desk. So they figured they would try it. They literally went onto my Facebook page is still there and wrote, this is the best stuff since sliced bread was invented. That's quite a compliment. So that was the other catalyst. And then it's kind of just grown from there. I have like amazing customers that probably do a better job selling it than I do. Well, Beth, how was the patent process? Did you acquire a patent for the spray away cleaner? It was turned out to be a huge waste of money and time for me. And I patented two inventions at that time. One of them is water skates and water skate poles. There was nothing like it on the market, and there still isn't, but it was not patentable, but it cost me 10 grand. And then spray away the same thing. 
10 grand, not patentable anymore. Um, as a matter of fact, Clorox and Lysol and a couple of these other big companies are no longer patenting any of their formulas because the government is not allowing it. So I don't recommend people just automatically going out. And not only that, when you patent something, especially if it's got chemicals in it or uh, secret ingredients, once you patent it, it becomes known to the world what your secret ingredients are. And then people can actually steal it from you, especially once they find out it's not patented. I totally think that's messed up. That shouldn't be the way it, it works. Now, Beth, uh, how did you decide upon a manufacturer or do you manufacture it yourself? I manufacture it myself. In the summer, I use my garage. <laughs> Um, eventually when I get to the point where I'm going to be producing several 55 gallon drums a month, I will probably have to get bigger facilities. But right now I have an oversized garage and it is set up just like a manufacturing facility. So that's kind of the direction I'm, I'm going to stay in for now until I have it tested by the FDA to be approved by the FDA. I think once I have it tested and approved by the FDA, then I can go to like QVC ask them to showcase the product because they loved it. They thought it was great, but they wanted it laboratory tested to back up all of my claims about the product. So in order to do that, I would have to, you know, have it tested in one of their uh, approved labs. And their approved labs are also the approved labs of the FDA. So once I do that, I think that's going to really be the big game changer. Do you expect the testing to cost a lot? Yeah, well, not too bad. It's only about 20 grand and, you know, it it could earn me 4 billion. So <laughs> 20 grand for 4 billion is not too bad. I think the name Spray Away Cleaner is a great name. How did you come up with it? Because it literally sprayed that stain away. I mean, it vanished and it does that to blood stains, which is incredible. Dry blood stains. Sometimes that's even how I know what kind of a stain it is. If it's, you know, dark purple, red, you know, dark purple, black, and I spray it with spray away and it starts to dissolve, I, I can pretty much be assured that it's a blood stain. But it will dissolve dried blood stains on contact and eliminate them completely 100% in under 15 minutes time as they dry without having to put them through the wash. How does a spray away cleaner work? Do you spray it on and do you have to like brush it in or anything? Nothing. You spray it, leave it, let it dry, and it will vanish on its own. And it's not talk. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty crazy. It works on pet stains. Um, and it's funny, when I first got started, I had a lot of people ask me, I need something that takes care of pet urine on carpet. And I laughed and I said, pet urine is ammonia based. And there is no way it's going to come out of the carpet. <laughs> but it totally eliminates it 100% and the odors. It's just, it's just unbelievable. And how do you market the Spray Away Cleaner? Uh, what's your strategy for getting it into stores? Okay, so like I said, my customers are my best advocates. So they really do sell my product better than I do. And they sell it, it. It's really unbelievable. But yeah, and they've helped me develop new products since investing, inventing spray away. So I have people that buy my product, and they love it so much, they tell everybody else, if they own a business, they'll actually put it on their shelves and sell it for me. So that kind of was the first start I went into um, grooming facilities and auto detailing shops, and they loved my product and put it on their shelves. So then I went into like local convenience stores. We have one store here and it's a, it's a grocery store. It's a family owned grocery store and they've been around the Cape where I live in my area for about 40 years. So they have a, an excellent reputation. They only carry the very, very best products and they put my stuff on the shelf immediately. And so just telling people in my area that my product is on their shelves, makes other stores want to carry it. So it's just, that's a catalyst in itself. And then I'm on Amazon, eBay. I have my own website. I'm on eCharity, Range Me, which is a, a website for, you know, like Walmart and other big stores where they can buy uh, products in bulk. Yeah, that's pretty much where my, my oh, I also have a marketplace on, on Facebook. But yeah, I'm kind of all over the place right now. I'm just not national. 
You've been listening to episode 20 of the Invention Stories podcast, Beth Chester and the Spray Away Cleaner Part 1. I want to thank Beth for being our guest today. More information can be found at www.sprayawaycleaner.com. I want to thank Jessica Haynes of The Socket Saver for agreeing to be our first sponsor, so please visit their website at www.socketsaver.com. If you're an inventor who would like to be featured on the Invention Stories podcast, have a suggestion on how we can make this podcast better, or would like to become a sponsor, please contact us at inventionstoriespodcast at gmail.com. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we invite you to write a positive review for us on iTunes. An easy way to get there is to go to www.inventionstories.com forward slash review. More information and show notes can be found at our website, www.inventionstories.com. Thank you very much for listening today, and please tell a friend.